students. <laughs> okay, so we're going to record this. Hi, Kathleen. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, so good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Feller. Uh, I'm now a semester into my retirement from teaching at Baruch, where I spent 18 years on the faculty. Um, and I don't know, 10 or 11 years uh, doing the uh, working with uh, Nick Perella on the Senate internship program and Kathleen McCarty on the assembly program. And um, I've offered on a volunteer basis to work with any of you who are interested in applying for either or both programs um, for the coming uh, spring semester in 2024. Um, and we'll talk about that, how the, the application process works with me a bit later. Um, but let me now share my screen uh, and put some slides up which hopefully you can see. Okay. Now I need to be able to see it. We're, <laughs> why am I not seeing it? Screen sharing. Uh -uh. Li Ting, I, I don't know what I'm doing here with. Uh... I can see your share the screen. Yeah, but now I can't. For some reason, I'm, I'm not able to access my slides so I can move them. Um, all right, let me see if I can minimize the Zoom screen. Huh. Sorry for the delay here. And hi, Viviana, how are you? There's Professor Rivera hi. Burgos for all of you hi, Weissman I'm students. I'm good, how are you? We're good, we're just getting started here. Um, so hi. let me do slideshow uh from beginning there we go michael um, i might have to step out early for another meeting but i'll hope, hope to make up the second half in the afternoon session okay great thank Excellent. you so much for organizing this as always happy to do it okay so now i can see my slides here we go um there we go so we're going to start with the senate um, here's from the website and, and Nick can update any changes that he might have made in this description about what the Senate program is focused on. Um, you know, at the top level, it's about how do laws get made in New York State? Um, you know, how, how do our representatives develop you know, public policy positions and, and then write legislation that addresses public po public issues. Um, one thing you'll find out about if you do this program, most students have had an opportunity to interact with constituents back in the, the district. Um, I, maybe Kathleen and Nick can give us statistics uh, about, you know, how many issues for constituents do interns get to deal with? Is it 10 during the semester? Is it 100? I know it's a lot. Maybe Molly can address that. Um, you know, how does how does the legislative session work and, and how do we solve problems in state government? So those are kind of the, the top level um, objectives of the program, of both programs really. So this year, starting in January on the 18th, uh, the Senate program generally runs a week or two shorter than the assembly program. Um, it's just always been that way. Um, so the Senate program from January 18th to April 24th, uh, one thing that's common to, to both programs is the stipend, which has gone up in the past few years and is now $8,800, which, um, when Molly was in the program, it was probably less than 7,000. I, I don't remember, Molly can tell us. Um, Baruch, uh, Mark's students receive 15 credits. 
you register for one class for the semester, uh, 5001. Um, Viviana, I forget, what do Weissman students register for? How many credits? If you know. <laughs> I think you're, I think you're muted. Still muted. We'll come back to it, <laughs> or you can put it in the chat. <clears throat> in the Senate, and again, Nick can comment on, on the numbers, there have typically been up to 30 internships available. There are 63 senators. Is that close, Nick? That's exactly right, 63 state senators. Yeah, 63 state Senate districts and just under half host interns. <clears throat> the application deadline, oh, I can see I didn't change the uh, the date on the, uh, the web link, which I'll fix. Um, the application deadline is Tuesday, October 31st for the Senate. I think it's a day later than that for the Assembly. That means that um, Professor Rivera Burgos and um, I guess it's uh, Marco DeSena on the, the uh, Mark side, they will need to submit the applications by those dates, which means that working with me, you will need to finish them before those dates. Um, and I can assure you that I'm a pest and you will finish it before those dates. Okay. Um, so those are the basics about the program. Um, and here's the application process. <clears throat> You'll need to do a one-page resume. You'll need to submit uh, a paper that you've written for school, hopefully one for which you received an A, of you know six to eight pages so that Nick can see if you can write, which is kind of important when you're in, uh, uh, in these positions. And then one interesting feature of this application is that you're asked to do a one-page policy proposal and a rebuttal to the proposal. So you're you're basically pretending that you're you're starting the process of legislation and saying, <clears throat> um, I think that um, New York State should do more to improve uh, the safety and security of the New York City subway system. And in one page, here's why, <laughs> and here's how much it will cost, and here's what needs to happen. And then you get on the other side um, and you, uh, you argue against it in one page. Um, so if you decide to, hopefully you'll all decide to apply. And if you apply for the Senate, I will share with you a few successful uh, policy proposals that former students have written so you can see what they look like. <clears throat> You'll need to do a one-page personal statement about why you want to do the program. Um, and uh, that's kind of, you know, personal. What what has inspired you? What's interests you about going to Albany and learning how this all works? Um, <clears throat> you'll need three letters of reference from professors or people that you've worked for in uh, in jobs that you've had. And you'll need to submit uh, transcripts of all of your collegiate work. So, <clears throat> so if you started at, uh, I don't know, uh, Borough of Manhattan Community College and then transferred to Baruch, you'll need both the BMCC transcript and the Baruch transcript. Um, and uh, uh, again, you'll, we'll, the way this works is that I will collect all this stuff from you and put it together in one electronic file that uh, Professor Rivera Burgos and Professor DeSena can send to Nick and to Kathleen. So, so that's that's the drill. Um, let me stop the sharing for a minute and turn it over to Nick 
to make any additional comments um, and share any thoughts that he has uh, about the program. And um, then you can ask some questions. Okay, Michael, thank you so much um, for explaining the program. And that link that you have is still works. That's the one to our website. It just has okay. the 2021 date in it because that's when it was updated, but that still is the, the correct link to use. So, um, uh, Welcome to everyone who has joined the call today. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day uh, to learn a little bit more about our internship programs in the Senate. Um, as Michael mentioned, I'm Nick Grella, the Director of Student Programs here at the New York State Senate. And Michael did a great job explaining kind of the, uh, the application process uh, and kind of what goes on uh, with that. Um, <clears throat> I'll share a little bit about sort of the internship experience itself. So we place you in the office of an elected New York State Senator, and you will function as a junior level staff member um, in that office, which means you'll get a chance to see everything from constituent relations. Um, and Michael, I know you asked the questions about how many you know constituent issues, you know, what a, a a potential session assistant see. Uh, that's really up to the office, um, how much mail they're getting, um, and whether or not the student is going to be heavily involved in constituent stuff, or is it going to be more on the policy base? So really, it's kind of up to each individual member's office. Um, but uh, you come here and work like about three and a half months, I believe it is, um, and you get a bird's eye view of what your state government does. I always like to say that our state government provides uh, more than 90% of your governmental services. So um, the things that you do every day, um, driving on roads and bridges, water you drink, um, <clears throat> to the, the parks um, that you go to, uh, to do some recreation. Um, New York State has a, a big budget, it's over $220 billion and that funds all of the services uh, for 18 million residents. Uh, New York State, everywhere from Long Island, the eastern shore of Long Island, all the way out to Buffalo, New York City, to up north in Plattsburgh, to the southern tier, right? We're a big state. Uh, and so you, you do get to see how um, the policy process plays out while you're here, specifically the budget process. We set this internship up so that students really have an opportunity to see how the budget plays out. Um, so you will be there to, to witness that. And our program, um, last year our program ended unfortunately before the budget actually was adopted because um, it was adopted in the first week of May. And that was probably the one of the first times since I've been here that that's happened. But um, you're going into an election year next year where all members of the state Senate and the state assembly are gonna be up for reelection. So they are going to want to impress their constituencies. They are going to want to uh, get as many bills passed as they possibly can so that they can go home to their districts and tell their constituents, hey, look at all the great things I did while I was in Albany. So please send me back for another two years in November of 2024. Uh, that process will play out. Um, and inherent in that political uh, public policy process is the politics side of things. So you're going to get to see um, not just the policy development, but what is feasible and not feasible in terms of government solving a problem from the political end, right? Um, there are some ideas that are really great that never see the light of day because of politics. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there is that part of it. So you'll be placed in an office. And what we try to do in terms of matching up students with Senate placements, you'll see on the application when you work through it, there are, um, and there's an area where we ask you to choose three policy areas that you would be interested in learning a little bit more about. And they're within the application. There's about 40 plus standing committees in the New York State Senate. And so you'll write down three that you're interested in. And what we try to do is match up students um, at least with one of those three policy areas. So if you tell me you're really interested in, let's say higher education, I try to get you with somebody who's on the higher education committee. Um, if you tell me you're interested in environmental conservation, we try to place you know, folks there. Um, that's not to say it'll be the only policy that you'll be working on because again, we have 63 state senators, but 
each state senator here usually sits on four or five different standing committees. And so, you know, you could be doing environmental conservation, but that member may also be a part of the health committee or the aging committee, um, consumer affairs, right? So there's a myriad number of policy areas that they might be interested in. And again, because I said it's coming up on an election year, anything that comes up in the district that becomes a policy issue um, is going to be front and center in that senator's mind. Um, so that's how we try to match up. Um, we usually have probably around, I would say, 35 to 40 senators who request to host a session assistant. And we have um, enough room to accommodate 30 session assistants um, this year. Um, so we work with a diverse range of offices, everyone from New York City to Long Island to upstate um, <clears throat> central New York. And so um, you get kind of a, a, an interesting flavor. New York's a big state in terms of needs of its constituents. And each of the regions of the state are kind of a little bit different in what they're looking for. So um, you'll get that variety. Uh, you know, when you come here. Thanks, Nick. Can you also talk, I didn't mention it, <clears throat> the, the, one of the primary activities besides the internship is the model Senate at the end of the, the program. Can you talk briefly about that? Absolutely. <clears throat> I think it's the, it's the most fun thing that we do. I know from my perspective, um, you know, getting everything set up, it, it's the most fun thing that we do. Um, throughout the time that you're here, we teach you how to write your own piece of legislation. You are going to become a sponsor of a bill. And throughout that process, we teach you what goes into it, the different parts of a bill, which culminates in you having an idea that's in bill form. And in April, we go into the Senate chamber. And you get to play senator for a day. You get to sit in the seats um, that the senators sit in. And we debate and discuss uh, your colleagues' bills. We have 30 of them. Everybody does a bill. Before that, we place you into mock political parties. You select your own leaders. We do party conferences on a weekly basis, um, usually starting in early March to prepare for the model session um, so that by the time we get on to that Senate floor, um, you know your <laughs> bill back and forth and you're able to explain it um, to everybody else. We, uh, we broadcast it um, live on our Senate YouTube channel. Um, it's on our Senate internal channel. So your, the placement offices love to watch their session assistants debating the bills. And each year I get comments about how the student senators um, sometimes do a better job than the real senators when it comes to um, debating bills. So that's always nice to see. And it's the big capstone you know, for our program. We do an educational component um, every Friday, there's a, an academic seminar um, where you'll come and meet with uh, myself and my student programs team for an hour and a half, two hours each Friday. Um, there's some reading assignments and some the writing assignments are really geared towards um, building up for the model session and the drafting of your bill. So those weekly assignments, um, you know, will help you uh, draft your bill and, and get through everything. You write a final paper. Um, based upon your experience with drafting your bill and kind of tying everything all together. Um, and that's our academic component. Uh, but the, the model session, I think, is the most fun. I know I, I, I got to participate in one 23 years ago in the assembly. I loved it. Um, and so it's, it's still going strong here. Great. Thanks, Nick. Um, one uh, minor question about the application itself. I know that the assembly application in the last year or two has been a fillable PDF. Mm -hmm. Is the Senate now a fillable PDF? While we are on um, live here, I'm going to go take a look and make sure that that's the case. <laughs> I believe it, it is. In, in the past, I convert. Okay, good. Because in the past, it, it is. Yes, it, it <laughs> is a fillable PDF. I mean, the students are going to have to, you know, print it out to sign. Um, Right there, right. but yes, it, it is in a uh, fillable, fillable uh, PDF for you. Okay, I just want to share uh, a couple of pictures quickly before we do questions. Um, share screen. So, can you see this shot? Uh, the that's the Senate uh, 
the the lectern uh, wow. the, at the front of the Senate chamber. This is 2017, I think. And those five people are all Mark students who were elected to be officers of the model Senate. And I think there are like six or seven officers. <laughs> so we kind of ran away with it. <laughs> Kwamid Francis, who um, could not yeah. join us today, is now the executive director of City Year New York, which is an enormous nonprofit organization. Um, and uh, thought it'd be interesting for you to see that picture. And let yeah. me show you one other. You got Oscar uh, and you got Oscar, yeah. Tara, yeah. Paul and Anna, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. he's finishing law school now. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, let me go to, uh, if I can get this to work. I had, I opened up file, I'll close this file. This is last year's group, part of it. And that's Chancellor Matos, who was up in Albany and met with ah. our, the Baruch students. So a couple of these people are Weissman and the others are uh, Mark students. Okay. So you do get to meet um, a lot of people and uh, you get to meet the senators and the assembly members in person because you're working for them. Um, so now let me turn it over to the group. I'll stop sharing. Uh, for any questions. Farhan, go ahead, unmute and ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I just wanted to um, ask the question of, uh, I have two questions. Firstly, um, so my situation is this, that I am currently working for a state senator I'm working as a constituent liaison for State Senator Jane Sanders Jr. So I was wondering, right? So while applying for this application process, is there a way that like if there's a specific senator you want, you can choose that senator so that I won't have to lose my job while doing the internship? Is that possible? So if if you were to do the internship, uh you'd have to choose between the two, right? Um, because you can't be on the, the payroll in two different uh, positions at the same time. So it, you already have a full-time job with Senator Sanders? Yeah. I was yeah. a part-time, part-time, yeah. Part-time. Yeah, okay. And are you paid for that? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you would have to go off the payroll for that in order to come on the payroll uh, to be a session assistant. Yeah, because you, you can't be under two different classifications at the same time. Okay, got it. And um, I was also wondering that, so let, let's say if I do want to work with him um, for the session, do I, is there a way that I can pick it or like I don't have any control over that? So um, a couple of things on placement. Um, we can never guarantee anyone a placement. You know, you can put it, certainly put it in your application and I will definitely take that under consideration. The question then becomes, does that Senate office request a host? The Senate office would have to request a host and then be chosen to host a session assistant. Um, but but when you apply, you can certainly put that information in there. And I am happy to share that with um, the administration here. Um, it's just, there's no guarantee that we'd be able to, to get you with Senator Sanders. But all the placements, you know, we, we spend a lot of time working on those and making sure that they're uh, top notch, so that students get the best experience possible. Great. So basically, if yeah, sorry, I'm just sorry, just one more follow up, and then I'm done. So basically, if he would request to host, right, then I would mm -hmm. likely be placed with him. Or and if he doesn't, then like there's no chance with him. Then if he doesn't request a host, then no. Um, if he does request a host, he has to be chosen. Um, he has to be selected to pick that because again, usually I have around thirty five to forty members who request. There's only thirty session assistants, so there are some who don't wind up with. Um, having a session assistant. Um, so even on that end, even if they're requesting, they would have to be selected to host, right? And, um, you know, I, I can't guarantee that either. Uh, but if you do apply and, you know, you put all that information in the application, your personal statement that you're interested in working with him, I can certainly at least make the case um, that that may be a good spot if you're selected for the program too, so. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're very okay. welcome. Let's go to Juan and then Edward. 
Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, this is a question for uh, Professor Feller. Um, in the slides uh, you showed, uh, it says that there are 30, up to 30 internships for this program. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm also interested about the, um, uh, the other one that is related to labor unions, but um, I see that there are up to 30 internships. So my question is like, how many uh, spots uh, can be chosen for Baruch for one of these <laughs> internships? That's what I'm <laughs> Good question. curious about. So, <clears throat> so I will tell you that over the course of the last 11 years or however long it is, and the 80 plus students that have applied for the program, mm -hmm. all but one student who applied for the programs was accepted to either or both. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's no set number. Nick get the, you know, the, the assembly program, uh, Kathleen will give us the correct number for this year. In the past, it's been, I think last year was at 130, somewhere around there. Kathleen, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, in for the assembly? Yeah. Last year, we had 75 interns. We used 75. Uh, okay. Before the pandemic, we took 150. This year, our numbers will be higher than 75, lower than 130, but somewhere in the middle. Okay. So, as you can see, mm -hmm. in terms of the competition, there yeah. are fewer spots in the Senate. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, a hundred percent of the students who have applied working with me over the past eleven years were accepted for one or both programs. Um. So, um, and and I will tell you now, and Molly can talk about this. The main thing is to get to Albany. Both programs are outstanding. They're slightly mm -hmm. different in the way that they run. And Kathleen and, and, and Nick Tony will talk about uh, how the assembly program runs in a minute. And Molly can give you the, the student view of how that worked out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to hear somebody who did the Senate program, uh, Malika Zainab will be doing the five o'clock session. Uh, mm -hmm. And she did the Senate program a couple of years ago. Um, <clears throat> so from my perspective, with all the students that I've worked with, the main thing is that you got to go to Albany, okay? Mm -hmm. Regardless, they're, again, they're both outstanding programs. The stipend is identical. <clears throat> and students who have gone through it have gone on to do some great things. So does that answer your question? Uh, yes, Professor, thank you. <clears throat> Good. Edward, you're up. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Professor. Um, thank you so much for the all the information. So my question might be a little bit um, kind of sidetracked, uh, but it's related to this. It's concerning with um, in terms of housing, right? So I understand that we'll be up in Albany. Um, is there any information on whether or not is the stipend that's provided, is that is that what we use to cover for housing to stay up there? Or is there a separate, you know, size <coughs> for the, housing? So I'll let Nick and Kathleen talk about this, but the, the general answer is that once you're accepted, you're responsible for finding your own housing. Mm -hmm. um, most students, again, Molly can talk about this because she went through it. Most students, uh, certainly at Baruch, end up, you know, pairing up or tripling up <laughs> or quadrupling up and going to visit Albany after they've been accepted and before the program starts to find places to live. And there are numerous students who have you know, they find uh, people who have houses with rooms that they rent out for the semester. Um, probably a majority do it that way. And then a number of students uh, take advantage of <clears throat> dormitory rooms at the College of St. Rose, which is in Albany, and makes those available. And, you know, you'll have to do the research on how much that costs and, and so on. But I can tell you that that the the eighty eight hundred dollars stipend should be more than adequate to to fund renting a place in Albany and paying for your food and transportation for the semester. Um, Kathleen, Nick, 
uh, other comments about housing? <clears throat> no, I, I would just say that that's, um, you know, that's exactly right. The stipend is there to help defray some of the costs of moving up to Albany. Um, I, in my 13 years of doing this, have never had a student who has turned us down because they couldn't find housing. Um, so it's, uh, you do have to do the research, you know, find the areas where you want to be. Um, and we can certainly help with that. Um, we can, we can tell you where the, some of the, the better areas are. I do have a couple of, uh, some other links that people can use, um, in terms of looking for housing once you're selected. Um, but, but absolutely. And, um, <clears throat> And I know I'm looking in the chat room here and it looks like Molly will be able to, to kind of give her experiences there on the housing side of things. But I would say for really the vast majority of students, it's always uh, it's always been able to come to fruition for them and they can do the program. Um, and uh, and with that, Michael, I kind of have to sign off here. Um, but I did place my email. Oh, yeah. And my Thanks, phone Nick. For, yep. Yeah, I've got my email and my phone number um, in the chat room. For anyone who has any uh, questions after this call today, please feel free to reach out to our office. Um, we're happy to chat with you, walk you through the application process and, and answer any questions that you have. But um, thank you to everyone um, for allowing me to share a little bit about the program. And, and Michael again, um, and Lee Ting and Viviana, thank you so much for putting this together. And uh, I look forward to seeing your applications uh, when you're ready to submit them. Okay. Uh Thank you. Viviana, do you have something you wanted to add or ask? Yeah, I also have to run to another meeting, but I have a student who messaged me through the chat. She's in the library, so she can't speak out loud. Um, but she wanted to, she asked me a question, but I think it's better to open it up uh, to the ones who actually review the applications and have more experience. Um, she wants to know about the essay requirement, the six oh, oh, yeah, essay. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I can yeah, answer that. A little more uh -huh. about... Yeah, that's what very, that's very simple. Yeah, that's very simple, Viviana. Thank you. Again, you, and you'll see on the the assembly slides, it's a slightly shorter <laughs> uh, writing sample. It's a writing sample to see if you can write. Okay, and it's not on any particular topic. As I said, most students pick the best paper they ever wrote for a class. It doesn't matter whether it was a class related to public policy or a class related to English literature, right? It's just, here's here's my writing and it gives uh, Nick and Kathleen and, and the other Nick a chance to see if you can write, which is an important, very important skill. And um, yeah, so it's, it's no more complicated than that. There are no assigned topics for the essays. Thanks. Um, Thank you. Sure, and I'll see you. I'm available to Weisman students too who have right. um want help with the application. I'll yes, I'll log in this evening if my two year old lets me. I'm hoping he will. Okay, fingers okay. crossed. Bye. <laughs> Take Bye. care. Yeah, everyone. thanks. Um, Faran, did you have another question before we turn it over to Molly, or you just didn't turn your hand hand off? Yeah, um, uh, just a, a brief question. Where will this meeting be posted? I'm sorry, what meeting? meeting? Oh, Lee That's Ting. Meeting. Lee Ting can answer that question. <laughs> so could you say it again? What be posted? Where Where will you? How will they be able to get to the the recording of the sessions? Um, I need to look into it, but um. You know, if I upload it, I make sure everyone today got the link, you know, to see the video. So basically, and, the people that I, registered for this meeting, they're going to get the link. Yes, correct. Uh, and I, I would and suggest, even as long as those yeah, who was, registered or maybe not available, you know, not able to attend today. I mean, we got yeah. your email, you know, once I upload the uh, once I upload the video uh, recording of today's meeting, I will share the link. Yeah, I would say, Li Ting, you could do it as one of your uh, B spot notes to the whole B spot group um for kids who you know students who weren't able to to RSVP or show up exactly you know, just, exactly yeah okay edward did you have another question uh yes yeah. so this is about the policy proposals um in terms of for that one 
I mean, I'm going to maybe assume here any topic is acceptable, right? Sure. Okay. Like, for for example, I I am more education-oriented, uh, so I do focus Absolutely. on specific education, so if that's fine. Well, again, if, if you join me uh, to work on your application, you will receive three or four sample policy proposals for students who were accepted to, for the Senate program. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Sounds exciting. Okay. One more question from Juan, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, actually Molly. We're going to hold on, and I'm going to we'll talk about the assembly program first, and then turn it over to you. Juan, mm -hmm. what's your question? Yes, Professor. So um, maybe I didn't hear that, but how can we um, start that, that workshop or or the um, application with you? Yeah, I'll talk about that at the end. I'll Excellent. go through Thank that you. at the end, okay? All right, so let me share my screen again and put up the slides on the assembly. Okay. Whoops, did I did I mess something up there? Oh, okay, I gotta reshare it, sorry. Let me try that again. Share. Uh, slideshow from current. Okay. So again, this is similar to what you saw about the Senate. <clears throat> um, a difference, and, and Kathleen and Nick can talk about this, uh, is that the primary academic activity for the Senate program is developing your uh, model Senate legislation that you write and present and debate and vote on. <clears throat> um, the assembly program has a more formal academic approach, which includes a weekly class session, which again, Kathleen and Nick can talk about. Uh, there's a syllabus, there are readings, there are quizzes, there's a, a, a paper due toward the end of the program. There are three professors in residence who, who teach the course. Um, again, I'll let uh, Kathleen and Nick talk more about the policy forums and the mock session um, <clears throat> and the program that I don't think I've added here, which is with uh, graduate fellows. Kathleen, that's still going on. Uh, absolutely. And actually, as I look at this list, I feel like we need a whole hour just to ourselves. We actually added uh, the graduate scholar piece where in turn uh, our undergrads are assigned to a pod. So we have 10 <clears throat> graduate students and uh, 10 pods and those graduate students end up acting as uh, mentors for our undergrads. They help them through something that's actually not listed here, which is our mock budget session. Um, so we teach interns all about the budget, the ins and the outs of one of the largest budgets they're ever going to have the, the pleasure of seeing uh, highly detailed into. Um, and these groups go go along together through the whole session and uh, really bond. It's um, I think really fantastic for all of the interns. Uh, this this um, and then they even have some fun together. This year they had done an escape room. So the students had to get out of a room um, answering questions and clues about, you know, a bill and everybody had so much fun with that. So the pods are definitely a new part and so is the mock budget hearing along with of course our mock budget session. Uh, we do have um, an end of year celebra celebration ceremony uh, where we recognize our students who have um, are will be published for a paper that we have them write. We have them write an, uh, an analyze, analyze a bill paper. And the top papers are uh, academically published um, and we recognize mm -hmm. students at that award ceremony. Um, and uh, Nick can jump in at any time if I'm missing anything. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the most exciting thing about our program in the last couple of years is the pod experience where our interns get to um, obviously not only just learn about the sort of more practical side of the legislature, uh, you know, how to work in an office, how to, uh, you know, how to how to communicate, how to write better. Um, you know, I, finding that our students are forming stronger bonds with each other, right? So I think sort of... Um, really one of the the highlights of our program is this network that you'll create with all of the interns here, right? I mean, um, interns from all across the 
the world actually in, in our program. Um, and so uh, I really love the way that our pod works, um, our mock budget hearing. So, you know, you don't just get a crack at one mock session. We obviously, we do that at the end of session, you get to play an assembly member, you get to write your own legislation, but we have a mock simulation as early as January where um, you guys get to play an assembly member or an advocate um, really driven by you and your interest. What do you wanna do? Do you want to be an elected official? Maybe you'll play an assembly member. Do you want to be an advocate? Uh, we have a journalist piece. If you want to be a journalist, you write an article, you interview assembly member, you know, uh, mock assembly members and mock advocates, and you put together a newsletter. Um, a really cool experience. Um, and I think something about our program, again, one of the, one of the great things is that, uh, you know, our staff here is really, we're here to help you 24 seven. I mean, we're always here, right? So, um, you know, we answer questions big and small, and that starts as early as today. If you guys have questions, um, I know Molly's going to talk about housing, but, you know, we don't just encourage, we sort of request that you contact us during your housing search, because we work very closely with a couple of, uh, of, uh, of people who, uh, you know, obviously, I know Michael mentioned St. Rose, but we have another housing uh, sort of friend, I'll say, uh, that we have been working very closely with. So we want to make sure that you your transition up here is as smooth as possible. Uh, and, uh, you know, those aren't issues, right, uh, for you guys. So, uh, you know, the questions start whenever you, you guys are interested. We're here to answer them. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, no problem. Um, great. So let me move on to the next slide. Come on, move. So the dates, as I said, the assembly program runs a little bit, a couple of weeks longer, January 8th to May 8th this year, coming year. The stipend is the same. The number of credits for Mark students is the same. And we'll have to find, forget how many Weissman students get. I don't think it's 15. And obviously up to 150 is old news uh, based on what Kathleen said. So Somewhere north of 75, it sounds like, but fewer than 100, 130. Uh, the application deadline is November 1st. Uh, Nick and Kathleen, is the application posted on the website yet? Yes. Great. Great. Okay. Um, so the assembly application is a bit shorter. Um, the form, the resume, those are the same. Three pages instead of six. Again, any topic, it just needs to show that you can write a one-page personal statement, two letters of reference, and transcripts of your um, of your schoolwork. Okay, Michael, if I can just jump in, I would just like to say that um, one of the one of the most important pieces that a student can hand in is that perfect that personal statement. Um, personally, with placements, I want to know everything about each one of you as individuals because someone's perfectly amazing dream office is another person's nightmare because it's all based <laughs> on what your, you know, what are your goals? What are your skills? What are your personal comfort levels? What do you want to do? You know, what is that, um, the legislation that you're interested in? What, what do you want to get out of this? That's so important. So the personal statement, like really put some time into that. Don't just regurgitate your resume. That's not very helpful. Like I want to know who you are, what's your family like, what, what's bringing you to make this trip to Albany and spend a semester with us. And we take a lot of care in making sure that individually everyone gets um, gets what they need out of this internship. Uh, we have a full staff. We have four PhDs. Nick actually is a, a PhD candidate. He'll have his PhD soon. Uh, everybody really cares about the program and the students. We have a full staff here, um, including myself, to support you guys. We have also a professional closet if anybody needs, you know, not everybody has money for a jacket or a suit or a tie. We're going to help you with that. Um, the speaker raised our speaker. We're, we're, you know, we're the house. We're the people's house. And I asked for two things last year. One was a professional closet and the other one was um, a food pantry. And so he he let us have the professional closet and he said, let's just give them more money so they can buy their own food. So, uh, you know, that and then Nick did some homework. Our Nick did some homework and he found some housing that was really safe and affordable. 
Um, the thing I want you guys to know, though, is that the stipend is broken up over two weeks. So everybody, this is a, you know, this is a case for us and the Senate. Every two weeks, you get a paycheck that is part of the stipend. And we break that down. I think I gave um, Michael the figures. And you won't get your first stipend check until January 31st because there's a lag. That's just how the state works. Um, so you want to be prepared for that. Um, so just to, you know, have a lit, some money up front so that you're not caught off guard when you get here. And then, of course, paying for paying for housing and food and things like that. Thank you. Thanks. So I just want to get that Definitely. in there. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. That's all very helpful information. And uh, you can tell from both Nick and Kathleen and Nick number two, these are people who are enthusiastic about these programs and who care very much about the success of the students who come to do the internships. Um, and I can speak to that because I've now known them for 10 or 11 years. And um, without exception, they do a remarkable job of making sure that everybody has a good experience. So um, I'm gonna skip the next slide, because um, they're not here. There's the last two years. Um, I have typically, and maybe I'll do it again this year, even though I'm retired. As you can see, this is during the winter. Um, by the way, in case you've never been in Albany in the winter, it's colder than New York City oh. and gets more snow. So be prepared. Um, but um, these are the students who were there in those years. Uh, we meet for breakfast on a Saturday at the Iron Gate Cafe. Um, this person actually is Sadia Santos, who was in the Senate program some years ago. And after she graduated, stayed in Albany. And she now she worked for a state senator for a number of years in Albany. And now she works in the um, state higher education department that's responsible for universities and things like that. And she's been able to join us. Um, so here's someone had asked for my email address. There it is. Mm -hmm. There's Professor Rivera Borgos's email address. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and we'll, you know, I'll follow up and make sure that you have that information after we're done. Um, so let me stop sharing now and turn it over to Molly to talk about her experience. I think I sent you a brief description of what she's done since she, when she was at Baruch and since she's, she's on her, her second uh, full-time position. Uh, well, with her second organization, she had several positions with the first one, which also, by the way, came out of an internship that she did uh, in my other class, the Hagedorn class. Um, but I'll let Molly talk about that. Molly, over to you. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I will talk fast because that's what I do and for the sake of time. Um, but I threw my email and my cell phone number in the chat. So if anybody wants to just text me, like it's super mm -hmm. easy. I don't mind. It's probably the best way to get in touch with me. Um, I did the assembly internship pre-COVID, so like I'm sure a lot has changed since then, so keep all that in mind. Um, the first thing I'll talk about is housing. Albany is an area where they expect you people to come work the legislative session and then go home. So there are short-term leases that are under mm -hmm. a year. I had a six-month lease um, with a very nice guy. I found it on Craigslist. Don't knock it. Trust your gut. <laughs> I, it was a, he was a nice guy. He was a firefighter in the neighborhood and a family man. And he had rented to former um, assembly internship students. So he was just kind of like, they're leaving and now I have a new lot. Um, I roomed with two people from Baruch. Three people is probably the best number for math. Um, it ended up coming out to like, I got two paychecks a month, one for rent, one for everything else. And it was totally fine. Albany is cheap. It is not like the city. You, you can survive. It was like, I, I had my rent was 500 bucks split between three people, three bedrooms. We had a living room. It was huge. It was awesome. Um, my day to day was very fun. I learned a lot. Um, you'll, in terms of the constituent stuff, I, I feel like Kathleen might laugh at this. It depends on what bill is hot and popping. I was around for when they removed religious exemption 
for vaccines. So that was a really fun one that everybody came. There were protests. They were knocking on our door. It was entertaining, but like you learned so much how to interact with constituents, with public interest groups, um, with nonprofits. I ended up falling in love with a few nonprofit groups that I met that I had never even heard of. Um, I got to go to committee meetings with my assembly member. Um, I didn't really have a lot of internship background when I came. Um, I was a full-time nanny and I ended up getting paired with Ellen Jaffe, who was the chair of the Children and Family Committee at the time. So it was kind of like a perfect fit. Um, I was like, no one's going to read this. And I, I put effort into my essay. And like, it's interesting now hearing like from Kathleen's perspective that like they, they really do read these. So like, tell them what you want and what you're looking to get out of this. Um, what else was I writing down? The constituent issues are fun. Um, answering the phone is fun. You might get to people that the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top and you have to learn how to like navigate that. You might get people that have a very specific legitimate issue that like your assembly person can do something about. Um, the person in your office, your supervisor is not necessarily gonna be the assembly person. That, that supervisor is going to be your, your golden ticket to everything. They know ev they know everything. Um, I worked with Christina Philo, um, who was super amazing, and she taught me a lot and just encouraged me to like get out on the assembly floor to attend meetings. So just put yourself out there. As much as they want you to do, do it. Um, let me think, what else? Um, oh, and I feel like this was mentioned, but networking. Um, my, both of my old roommates, uh, one of them works, um, for, uh, Charles Fall in Staten Island now, and then another one, um, works for, what was it? He was working for Esperanza, which is like another nonprofit they lost funding. Um, but we're still connected and like, I talk to them about work sometimes and like, you, I met so many people. Um, I will say Baruch students, you will be outnumbered by the Albany students, 100%. We're a tiny knit group of city kids. So find the other Baruch students, be friendly, get roommates. Um, I think like the housing, I can send you like a map of where I was. I was walking distance. Out of the three roommates, one of them have a car. I did not have a car or a driver's license. So I picked an apartment that was walking distance um because it worked for me and then the roommate with the car we would do like every week or two a trip to walmart walmart's gonna be your best friend also um that's just like off the top of my noggin i know the you know like the people in charge of facilitating the process have so so much more information but this is coming from like my student perspective this is all the things that i was freaking out about i was like where am i going to live totally doable just find Find a person that you consider yourself living with for six months that is also doing this program and you guys will be fine. Um, the other thing that I think I freaked out a little bit about was the classroom portion of this. I was like, how am I supposed to work a full-time job and do the classroom portion? The classroom portion was also fun. It was like, I don't know if the curriculum is different, but we learned a lot about like the history of Albany too, which I found fascinating, just kind of like how we are getting to this point and why things are moving the way that they do. Um, and the final, let me ask you guys, um, when I was there, the major difference between the Senate and the Assembly, and this is my like whittled down difference, was that the Senate was more flexible, unlimited hours and you could work late night, whereas the assembly is a cutoff at five o'clock. You cannot work past 5 p.m. That that well, was the, the major I'll jump difference. in and, yeah, I'll jump like, in and just- I don't know if that's changed at all, but like, that was like assembly, like you can't work after five, like that's it. But I know some of my Senate friends were working until late night, but they're, they ended much earlier. So I don't know if that's still the same, Jackie. Yeah, it's, it's similar. I think that we have, we want you to be able to leave at a decent time because we want you to have a life uh, and not just be hanging around in the offices after hours. You know, uh, there's plenty to see and do during the day. There's plenty of session to see and do and go to. Um, and we make sure all of those things happen in our work learning contract. And we, these, what's a little different, I think, Molly, when were you here? What year? I can't remember. It was 2019. 
2019. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we, I'm just trying to think. Yes, yeah, so I think at that time, but certainly since then, um, supervisors have to be trained now. That actually may have come out of the pandemic, but oh, you can't yeah. be in an assembly office without a trained supervisor who's making sure that you're getting to session and getting to committee meetings and getting to, you know, go to all these things and do these things. So, um, we, you know, every year we change and we make it a little bit better, but, you know, there's a reason for us wanting you to, to leave at five, um, ha have a life, go hang out with the interns, yeah. go see Albany, go do things, you know? There's a lot of fun stuff to do there too. Yeah. Um, I can definitely, if anyone wants me to like send a screenshot of a map, there's like fun little trivia nights and there's a cool movie theater. Like there's, there's stuff to do. And Kathleen is right. Like be, be social. Cause once once the snow comes, you're inside. <laughs> you're going to be inside. Um, and if you don't already, uh, I know Kathleen mentioned clothes. A good pair of snow boots are going to make or break this. Um, I am from New York. I thought I could survive in tins. Don't do what I did. Buy a pair of snow boots, okay? <laughs> that's that's what I'm going to leave off on. If anyone has any questions, um, let me know. Um, and I know, are you guys still doing that final essay? You do the big book of like the award, like yeah, the distinguished uh, paper, think, the awards. Yes, that's uh, we okay. actually publish some of that. So that's I think a a little a crowning jewel of the program where a student can actually leave with a, an academically published paper, uh, which is yeah, nice. I actually I got my paper published and it was a really wonderful like just hey, oh my gosh, thank you Edward for coming. Um, <laughs> it was a really like just nice culmination of everything to be recognized. Um, the paper is lengthy. My advice would be pick something you're passionate about. You'll bang out in two seconds. Um, but yeah, questions for me. I know that was a the, lot. The nice thing about the paper is that you can analyze the bill. You can analyze legislation. You understand the ins, the outs, all around it, you know, and, and that can help land you a job because if you have that kind of knowledge, you can work anywhere mm -hmm. and you're going to be that much farther ahead than anybody else you're competing with for that position. Because lots of people work in offices and make coffee and you know shadow in meetings this is not a shadowing experience you are full in full on uh and you leave with real knowledge we we work hard to make sure that that's that's the case Absolutely. and lots of our I students get job get jobs here afterwards as well and molly, molly even if you wanted to come back we'll help you find a <laughs> job it's funny yeah i was i was like one semester off from graduating um but i know a lot of people who stayed and like absolutely loved doing it um it was too cold so no, i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> don't blame don't blame me there <laughs> thank you um yeah thanks absolutely. molly but a any questions before we sign off any questions for molly or kathleen or nick or me um so i also put we'll our phone on. number in the in the chat group if anybody wants to reach out at Great. any time and molly reach Great. out to me i will thank definitely. you uh christopher who looks like a kitten Yes, we'll take, so. we'll take the cat. We take cats. We take dogs. Okay. okay. Yes, I appreciate that. Um, you know, with my Brook uh, email, I'm a little less professional. He's a handsome boy, so I figured he uh, he makes the cut. Anyway, um, speaking on the essay um, and the academic work, um, is that specifically for the assembly, or is that also something that goes through the Senate program as well? The published so, paper. Uh, yes, Christopher. The published paper is just for the assembly. Right. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. Again, in the Senate, you'll be writing legislation, proposed a bill about something that gets, uh, you know, it looks like a bill that would be written for the by a senator. In fact, several students have drafted their model legislation that actually ended up being presented by their senator in the real Senate and became law. So you can... <laughs> You can write a law for New York State. It's happened before. Okay. Actually, you know, um, Michael, I just want to share a quick story about one of yeah. our students this year. Um, uh, worked for one of our assembly members, and he, our mock session, our interns now are able to draft their own legislation as well. Uh, and actually, on the day of our mock <laughs> session, a bill that he wrote and sort of came from his life experience was introduced by his actual assembly member. So a, re a real success story, that bill is alive. It has a decent chance of passing when uh, the assembly gets back in session in January. So 
I, you know, just an example, you know, uh, of, uh, you know, something that just begins as sort of your life story. And we put it to paper, we helped this student get it in shape. And it is a bill that's alive. And it's just really cool. And on the day that he debated it in a mock session, his member introduced it in real life. So really cool stuff. Great. Yeah, I Thank mean, you for that. If you don't Edward, mind, I mean, uh, uh, go ahead, Christopher. Sorry. I mean, that sounds like a tremendous honor. Um, I mean, I think what I'm also wondering was um, in terms of, oh, yeah, I was going to ask in terms of uh, schedule wise, I mean, it's it's a honest work week, you know, Monday to Friday, and I imagine time will be allotted on the weekends as well to to work as well, or how does that usually look? I guess this is a question your week, Your weekends are your own. Um, you know, if you if you choose to do work or, or like writing the paper or things of that nature, we would encourage that highly. You'll also have some time in your offices to do some of that academic work. We encourage that. Um, but we don't, we don't want you, you know, you've got your whole rest of your life to work <laughs> five or seven days yeah, a week right. around the <laughs> clock, <laughs> you know, be an intern, be a student, uh, enjoy the other interns, but you'll get so much out of the day. Uh, that's plenty. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Edward, you have a, a, a last question? Yes. Um, and thankfully that question about like how 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 is it that actually I mean how is this just towards Molly in terms of what was and this might be a general question, like what was the most enduring aspect uh of your experience throughout your internship? And I mean maybe a little bit of like I want to hear from your perspective, how were you able to like balance the work and you know having a life out of work uh balance it out? If you may, I'm sorry if it's a long time. No, 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 totally valid question too. Um, I had a hard stop at five o'clock and I don't think that was something that like I put in my brain. I think it was like just a general rule or just advice that was given to us and I followed it. Um, you don't need to take your work home with you. It's not ever that serious. If it's an emergency, I get it. Um, but just trying to find fun stuff to do in Albany will make this a really good experience. Um, I went home on the weekends a lot and um, like, I don't know, I just made the most of the time that I had there. Like I made friends with a lot of people. There's, I don't know if you guys are still doing the, um, the Ireland exchange also. There was like a a slew of students from Ireland also so like that was really fun and like everyone would go out together um it's 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 what you make of it like if you're a social person person here you'll be social over there if you're not social here don't expect to suddenly become a social butterfly um but you're gonna work nine to five like you'll live close by it's not crazy commuting like the city like we're used to everyone kind of lives fairly close um, but enjoy the people that you're living with as well. Bring, bring a TV if you want, like just treat it like you're just moving away for a little bit and then coming back. Great. So I would say that we, we're the people's house. So we have students from everywhere. Yes. A mm -hmm. group come from Ireland, um, a group come from Italy. We have a lot of, uh, Turkey, st Turkish students. Um, it seems like these days, students from China, students from everywhere the dominican republic like everywhere we and we just love that it is and these days uh, a lot of the students end up living together living and traveling back and forth together a few more cars or riding the bus together or walking uh, so it's it becomes quite a community it's phenomenal great um so we're a couple minutes past but uh thank you to everybody for coming thank uh, you i posted I posted the slides in the chat box if you want to download those for yourself to take a look at them again. Um, and I'll follow up uh, after tonight with an email to everybody who, who participated. Um, the process will be, um, as, as Molly knows, there's a, a, I showed you the list of requirements. Um, I'll put your name on a spreadsheet with, those requirements going down the page and I'll check them off as you send them to me. I proofread every letter and every uh, punctuation mark in everything that you write, whether it's your resume, your personal statement, the application itself, um, the, the 
policy proposal for the Senate. Um, and as Kathleen and Nick know, when, well, I won't be sending them because I'm not, I don't work for the college anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> Professor Rivera Borgos and probably Marco DeSena will be submitting them and they'll be signing the application. Um, but Kathleen has been, I've been doing this with her for years now and Kathleen and Nick uh, Perella know that when they get an application from Baruch, it's complete, it's proofread and it's ready to go <laughs> and it's not missing anything, which means that I'll be a pest, all right? Because there is a deadline. I'm gonna be traveling some in October um, in Europe for you know 10 days or so. I'll have my laptop with me um, so I can keep up with things. But, um, you know, this is, it's a project um, and I'll uh, help you to, to do a, a successful application. All right. So thanks again to Molly and Nick and Kathleen for joining us. Uh, if you think of anything else, you have everybody's contact information now. Um, my email address is at the last page of the slides that I just uh, posted for you. Um, so please uh, stay in touch and, uh, you know, you'll let me know if you plan to apply. And uh, one more thing, um, I encourage people to apply to both programs. Um, that's a little dicey, um, but I encourage you to apply to both. Molly, I think only applied to the assembly, right? You decided you wanted to do the assembly. I don't and remember why. And Kathleen, but I did... double thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. I did <laughs> well, just apply. I don't remember why. I just have to share because Molly just shared with me uh, about her, one of her um, old roommates and Jessica Scarcella Spanto. She and another woman, a female intern of the assembly, ran against each other for the ticket for the Senate seat, which Jessica won. So now one of our in uh, past assembly interns is now a Senator. So you don't even have to go to the Senate to become a Senator. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty crazy. Huh? That's incredible. Yeah. From, from your class, Molly? This was someone from your group? Yeah. Yes. Wow. No, Jessica, uh, Jessica Scarcella Spanto. Well, she was, she wasn't Spanto at the time. She was Jessica Scarcello. Scarcello. Yeah. Priscilla, yeah, that's amazing. That's she amazing. ran against so, another assembly intern, and one of them was going to get the seat. So <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks to everybody. Thank you. And and uh, stay everyone. in touch. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Molly.